Welcome to the Studio Corner Podcast, Gavin Hayes. Round three. Um, before we start the show, I want everyone to know that I have a tattoo planned with this man. Oh. <laughs> and I've had a tattoo planned with you for some time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I put away money for it. Yeah. It was all ready to go, but, you know, COVID. <laughs> so that happened. But COVID. So that, eventually, that, that. someday, you will tattoo my leg. Yeah, one of these days. You know, it's funny because when I see old pictures, I've been referring to them as, you know, what, 2017 BC? BC. Before, before Corona. Corona. <laughs> 2019 BC. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's it was, a, it was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. Yeah. I was I was so ready. It's It sucks because, like, I have your original sketch on my door there. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I see it every day when I'm in the studio. And I'm like, oh, that could be on me. Yeah. One of these days. Uh, it's, it's uh, I'm very excited. Yeah. Very, very excited. It'll be a fun project. I just want to, like, rob a bank and just give you, like, here, here's, like, $50,000, Gavin. Go to town. Yeah. <laughs> Go to town, please. What we could do with $50,000 and, uh 200 hours. Longer than that, probably. Damn. Anyways. Did, you, did you just, like, go down that hole where you're just, yeah, like, everything you're going to draw on me? <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite thing you ever told me was, uh... I think the first time I ever had you on here, it's actually one of the first times like you and I ever like really like talk, talk. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I had asked you, I was like, all right, if I come into your tattoo shop and say, just put something on me and without hesitation, you're like birds. Birds. Yeah. <laughs> I have never stopped thinking about that. Eventually I will have a bird from you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I go in phases and it's, it's, it's being either birds or mushrooms. I mushrooms. always draw like overgrowth. <clears throat> I like it. Yeah. I like it. What are those things? Uh, they look like Christmas jingle bells. They're in a lot of, uh. A lot of your like these gold balls, like these four yeah, lines they, in them. They're uh, they're just like like bells. Okay, know? so they are bells. They are totally bells. Because yeah. I've seen them in multiple times. I'm like, what are these? Yeah, I've been really uh, uh, focused on like the balance, right? So a lot of my stuff have, has been like a like a cone perspective, you know, or or uh, you know, just something balancing on whatever. Like I had that tooth. Yeah. Had that really cool piece of filigree. Okay, I get it. That makes sense. Yeah. The, the, the bells kind of like take it. You, the most recent one I saw was a, on top and bottom, and the bottom well, was yeah, kind of like, they're like in front. thrown. You nice. know, as if it was like whipped, but then the, the claw is stationary. So. Yeah, you, you have a very good, uh, good eye and just a natural ability to create movement and like just almost animated aspects to yeah. these steel tattoos. You know, and I, <clears throat> I draw a lot of that inspiration from like the, uh, Japanese artwork, mm -hmm. you know, like all the neo trad Japanese stuff. It's um, very simple, but the movements like immaculate. Are you close? No, you're good. Okay, you're good. <laughs> I just I just look at it from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I really like to. I, I've been really focusing on just composition and making strong, powerful, like you know, single subject yeah. pieces. Well, I like that you're doing more. Uh, we were just talking about it, actually, is uh, the fact that you're focusing more on bigger pieces. Yeah. Um, before we get into the topic of the day, I've actually wanted to ask you on that idea of bigger pieces. You're a more established tattoo artist. It's not really, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not necessarily worth your time to do small pieces. Um, it's not really as fun. But uh, artistically and creatively, is it a different? Is it? Is it? more difficult to constantly have to do these bigger pieces to like say I'm going to give freaking eight hours of myself to this every day rather than like I can do a two hour tattoo or a one hour tattoo so with with like the smaller tattoos <clears throat> I can do them you know they look they're done well like executed well but they're just plain yeah if you know like if it's just lettering um, you can make it look cool but more times than not if it's just lettering or whatever the case might be it's just you know if that's somebody, is that somebody's like first jumping off point of my work, seeing that tattoo, they're like, oh, he's just a tattoo artist. Whereas okay. if I'm only doing larger projects with way more fluid and organic, you know, I can uh, showcase what I do. Yeah. You know? And now, like, my clientele pretty much knows that. So it's it's a blessing. It's you know, it's such awesome. An, it's such an interesting thing. Um doing what you like best and its importance of it because like take take music for example right like if i or not even music take me for example most people know me right now because i do a podcast now i don't have a million listeners i don't, I don't even think i have a thousand listeners like i just have people that listen to the show i do yeah. this because i love to do it yeah, yeah but i get asked more often 
how's the podcast going or how's fitness going or how's this going or how's music going but very rarely do I get asked like how are your songs coming how is your album coming oh, yeah. and I and I've over the last few months of like huh. investing my time into that I've recognized that it's so important to do what you want to do because you're never going to be recognized for it unless that's like what you spend your time doing like very much like your big tattoos it's not that you don't it's not, it's not that there's anything wrong with the smaller tattoos. It's that when someone looks at you, you want them to say, that's Gavin and he does this. Yeah. Like you know? if you see 10 tattoos, you could pick out which ones I did. Exactly. You know, and, and um, uh, yeah, I had a brain fart right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but no, it's, it, that's something I, I, that's something I've been thinking day, about a lot. So The day just caught up with me. <laughs> <laughs> did you tattoo today? Uh, no, I painted today. Hell yeah. 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 Because I get in these like art holes. You know, Arnold. where like nothing else exists except for the project at hand. Damn. Which goes back to like the big projects. Yeah. When I know I have a task at hand, it's just like there's no talking to me. It's just, you know, I'm completing the, the, the project. Yeah. Completing the task. And I think that's why I like it because I can focus 110% of my, you know. You're not afraid to give yourself to it. Right. And, you know, at the end of it, I'm just, I can barely hold sentences sometimes like Ugh, you know <laughs> I mean you did it right <laughs> yeah totally but then you know you see the, the end result and it's it's rad fuck yeah so, not to like boast about my work but it's you can boast all you want it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> it's really good it's badass <laughs> um, so the topic for today um, you and I have, a, have a, actually talked about speaking about this on the yeah, show totally. like I think almost a year ago or you know a long time ago and uh we just never got around to it, and it's funny to me that it we finally got around to it in a time we're in a pandemic and we're in lockdown because that really plays to this topic. So I think that the, what I'm getting as like road bumps and blocks in the creative flow, right? Dude, yeah. So I want to ask you right off the bat, road bumps and blocks. What is the difference between those two for you? Hmm. So if there is one, no, there totally is because yeah. there's times where. I just might be too scatterbrained, you know, or I feel like I'm, I have too much stuff going on to where I can't focus, but then I get it. Yeah. And then there's blocks where there's weeks, sometimes go on like a full month that I just, I, I hold the pencil like it's a foreign object. Wow. And I'm like, you know, and I get so frustrated with myself because I mean, it's, it, I'll go all the way back to just starting to draw like small shapes to like refocus you know and uh sometimes it just just doesn't happen and especially like when all this covid shit hit you know i had people on the books i was doing well like running and gunning and then it just pretty much all stopped i had a a full month of cancellations Mm -hmm. sometimes two and three a day i was one of them Yeah, yeah you know and i was just i was this is like right almost like before it got out of hand and so I was starting yeah. to like already think like fuck am I you know did I do something wrong you yeah because that's how I just internalize it um, but then yeah um, it, it's it kept on going more and more you know cancellations and it, so when I don't have time to tattoo typically I'll just draw or paint but this time it was just you know I had so much fuzz yeah it just wasn't happening so in that first like I guess like, you know, if it's a road bump, you know, in the creative flow, it'll last what, like a day, a week? Yeah, yeah, totally. Not even a day or just like, it'll just be harder to get to that point, that point of like focus and enjoyment. How do you, how do you recognize the, the two? Like, how do you know like, oh, this is just a road bump or shit, I'm in block? Because, you know, it'll, it'll be like, it'll be going on like day three of just, you know, sometimes when you're trying to like, you know, write a riff or whatever, sometimes you'll you'll catch like a little bit of it and yeah. you'll kind of, you know, build off that. But there's sometimes where it's just, you know, nothing. To nothing even like, starts. Yeah, nothing's there to be like. There's no inspiration because I just feel like just gray. Yeah. And then, but that's how I know is like because sometimes it'll just be an hour or two and I'm like fuck, and then I have to, you know, then I'll find something that I can pick up on. Yeah. And build, but. So what's, uh, under normal circumstances, outside of quarantine, outside of lockdown, what would, what is your remedy, I guess? What, what's like, do you have a routine? Do you have a way to combat this? What's, what's the, what's the remedy to the block and the, and the road bumps? So for me, it's been like, 
because I always try to draw everything straight from just reference, mm-hmm. loosely build it and create something. When I can't do that, I've learned to just like take an image, and trace it. Interesting. And, you know, and then you're building off a traced image that you're confident with. And you can kind of like bypass that. Right. So like if you're playing music, you know, you play a riff that, you know, works well, you know, until you're feeling that. And you, Interesting. Yeah. So it's kind of like going back to something that, you know, is already that, you know, is good already. You know, you're going to get a solid, you know, uh, structure, like a foundation. Mm-hmm. If I take like a snake head and, you know, some roses, you know, just whatever. And, you know, trace those and then you can compose something from that. That's really smart. That's yeah. really, really badass. So it's like reverting back to something you already know and then building on that. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that, actually. Hey, but you know, honestly, sometimes that doesn't work. Well, it, it, it could backfire. A, it, it could basically make you feel like, oh, God, this is like I have to trace something. Like, this is so good and I can't create this. You know, Or, or for me, it'll just be like I'll start to make these images that just look like generic because it's an actual image. And yeah. It looks very like, you know, stiff. There's no real like flow to it. You feel almost rigid. Oh, completely. Yeah, cuz I'm like, you know, right right curve, you know, eyeball here, shade there. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, that's what I I I I've typically done, you know. So now in regards to the quarantine, you know, being locked down, and as an artist, like, you know, you're spending all day in a tattoo shop, you know, you're interacting with people, you're going out, you're getting inspiration, like all these attributes or all these parts of life that, you know, help creative, you know, the creative flow happen Dude, yeah. are completely stripped away from you. So now when you approach these road bumps and blocks, how are they different? Like, has it changed at all? Like, is the, is the type of road bump different? Is the type of, you know, creative block different? Oh, well, you know, yeah, like 100%. Because typically when you have a clouded mind you're thinking about bills you're thinking about you know oh shit i forgot to text this guy back or you know whatever so you can't like you know slow the monkey mind Mm -hmm. with this time there's just so much negativity and there's so much you know uh um, static Hmm. you know and when when i'm you know genuinely thinking like fuck am i gonna be able to work you know is is the tattoo industry gonna survive from this like are people going to be afraid to spend money mm-hmm. so you can't go into art or any kind of creative process already with the 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 failure you know in the back wow. of your head I didn't even think about that that's you know, a really interesting point and that's you know I'm sure anybody like I have homies that are you know cabinet makers and fabricators and they go through the same thing you know that they're just wow. like you know you have to find that inspiration somewhere but just sometimes shit is too awry <laughs> you can't find it well it's you know like you said it's it's so heavy and so much negativity and it's not just like oh i can overcome it by you know diving into my art it's now like well is what i'm doing going to be able to let me live my life well and so that's an awesome point because when i first stopped when they first closed the shop i then went into like hustler mode like i now i need to make art to sell yeah. right and so there was like an objective, not just make art to create. It was, I need to sell this to yeah. live. And then just, dude, nothing was happening. Wow. I was having like breakdowns. Cause I mean, it was the better part of a month. Yeah. And I just, I ended up pushing, you know, just pushing all art away and just waiting for like the cosmic sign to, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. That's really, that's very insightful. Very, very insightful. I think, uh, I think a lot of us creative people are having trouble with, um, I don't even know if it's like we're actually having creative block. I mean, for me, it's like, I don't think it's creative block in this time for me. In my personal experience, it's not that I'm having a block or road bumps. It's that I've almost forgotten how to be myself. Dude, yeah. Well, cause you become like, um, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I do things sometimes like just to, so I can put it on Instagram. For sure. I'm going to paint this and you know yeah or i'm gonna make this to do this and it's like that validation yeah you know and then but once once i can learn how to set that aside like almost like set your ego aside then you can you know i still haven't learned how to separate those quickly it pretty much has come from me like just 
pulling my hair out and fuck, I break pencils. I have tantr- temper tantrums. You oh, can dude, ask my same. wife, dude. <laughs> same. I throw pencils across the room. I fucking spit and swear. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, it's something that I know I could do, but there's just something in the way that prevents me from doing it. What's really interesting about that is when we're in those states, and I'm, I'm going to be an asshole and I'm going to speak for everyone that's creative. When we are in that state, we cannot see clearly. You can't. We cannot. And I'm speaking for everyone because that's just the truth. That's what that state is. What I've learned is, you know, my girlfriend, for example, she's not an artist or a musician or anything like that. She's becoming a teacher. She's a, she's a very free spirit. She's very, very in-depth. She's got all these sides to her, but she doesn't have, you know, she doesn't know this side of me the same way I don't know that side of her, okay. you know? Yeah. So when I come to her and I say like, oh man, my music sucks. Like, oh, who the hell's going to listen to this? Why am I trying so hard? It's not good enough. This is not the kind of music people listen to. Like, I go down this rabbit hole of just not being able to see clearly when I get her perspective because then she'll look at that like, dude, are you fucking insane? Yeah, yeah. Like, is that, and then she'll be like, well, is that why you're doing it? And I'm like, well, kind of. There's got to be a certain part. She's like, well, this is what you want to do, isn't it? Yeah. She's like, and then it happens consistently. So this last time when it happened, like about a month ago, I started to doubt myself really heavily. Dude. Once we got through the conversation, she should have told me, she's like, you know what? This has happened too many times. Like, it doesn't get to keep happening and you not, you know, like, figure Do it something out. something about it. And I'm it, like, yeah. damn. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Okay. But it was interesting is like, we think it's the end of the world. Out. Oh, did it unplug there? Huh. Okay. I'm sorry. It kept, it kept cutting out. Um, we think it's like the end of the world and like we get the perspective of someone that's not I guess so invested into this thing yeah and we're like oh that's right this isn't the entire world it's just what we like to do that's why I'm lucky because Nomi she's you know she's an artist as well yeah so she knows when to just like kind of tap me on the back be like listen buddy chill (laughs) you know take a break because I'm stubborn I'll just keep on going and going you know and yeah. And then you just get more and more aggravated. Oh, yeah. You know? It's like poking a wound. Yeah. But I, I about what you were saying about, like, how, uh, you know, you get in that self-doubt. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's like, I know any artist will yeah. attest to that. Because, you know, when it when it gets bad, it gets really bad. You can have all the things in the world, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, and when you're there, you just, you can't bounce back. No. And uh, oftentimes we have to get real shitty before we can get to a place of like level. Right. Until you, literally yeah. until you surrender and you're like, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, Basically. and that's what I did, dude. Like the first month, it was just bananas. Yeah. You know, I was a mess. A mess. I was like, I didn't, you know, too many variables. And like, shit. So the creative flow, I guess when this quarantine happened, like it was blocked or it was, you know, tampered with because. You weren't able to allow it to be what it's what it is. You weren't able to just let it be the creative flow. It wasn't just about creativity. It was about how it am became, I going to survive? It became necessity. So you put so basically this lockdown kind of made put a burden on. Hundred uh, percent. Hey, you know the thing is like this is if this shit didn't make you a hustler, you're not a hustler. You know, if yeah. people are saying you can't do it, you have to figure out a way to do it. You know. Yeah. And I think that's where I was like, you know, went back to like my old ways of just scheming. Like, okay, what can I do to, you know, to make money, to make this thing happen? And I think that's what got in my way too, was that, you know, it became just not drawing. It was like, I need to do this, to do this. It came about validating factors, like making money off of it or getting people to like it on Instagram or this and that. I mean, I got what, 14? I mean, at the beginning of 2020, I had 1,600 followers. I started recording my music and putting it out there. I've got 1,400 followers, you know? So it's like... Hey, but the thing is this is it's unfortunate how much value we place on followers. Yeah, for sure. I do the same thing, but I feel like in these last couple months, I've really taken a step back and I've realized like it's okay not to post every day. Yeah. Right? I have my clients who know me who get my work and they don't, you know... uh, 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 <laughs> you lose me if you get lost on that one. Jeez, <laughs> lockdown's getting to you. I like it, it, dude. Yeah, crazy. You have your tribe. <laughs> you have the people that know who you are, and Instagram isn't going to change that. It, yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where my head's been. Uh, but no, that yeah, that's exactly that. Yeah. So, well, what's really interesting because like 
outside of quarantine, like per, in my personal experience, creative block, creative flow, like the idea of surrendering is so important, right? Accepting it, surrendering to it. And maybe it just means putting your shit down and walking away. Yeah, right? you have to. You Go have to. do something else. I mean, find a remedy that works for you or just badger it. Whatever works for you, works for you. But in a state of the world where you can't access all the options, it's like it's not just block. It's not just a road bump. It's this is what you like to do and everything that surrounds you is telling you to put burden on it, to put responsibility on it, yeah. to put rules to it. And then by the time you feel like you've got something figured out, you go to create and you're just, you know, blowing shit. Because it's like, you know, as much as you want it to be a hobby, to be fun, it, mm-hmm. you know, from, from my career instance, it's, you know, it's mandatory. And yeah. So, it, you know, it bypasses that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also an evolution, right? Like it's a blessing to have it become, you know, your career. It's a blessing to have it become what makes you money. But like everything else with more things coming into play, you have a responsibility. Yeah. So it's like, does that mean that it's necessarily bad to put those burdens on it? Or is it that you have an opportunity to evolve as a creative and recognize the importance of a creative flow to say, it's my responsibility to keep this open so I can continue to do great things. Right. Well, and it's my responsibility to learn new tools yeah. to keep accessing it. A, cause sometimes when I'm in a rut, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to other tattooers like, Hey man, what are you doing right now? What are you listening to? You know, like yeah. what do you, what's your day to day? And uh, I did that a lot when I was in a block. And you know what? Like 90% of my community, the tattooer homies, uh, were in the same exact, same exact way. Interesting. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, so, same same idea with the remedy. Like, so in because lockdown has brought down brought upon new difficulties in creative creativity. What what has become if you found any. Uh, the remedy for this every single time for me has been music okay it has been music because sometimes um more if i'm like sitting down like you know you go there you're like i'm gonna create i'm gonna make it happen i'll end up just like going through my playlist the entire time and uh once i find that good you know jam that just takes care of you it's uh you know it sets the mood, it sets the tone, it helps me relax. But um, I did that and then uh, I was just doing a lot of like different breathing techniques. Okay. You know, because sometimes you, you just get f- fried, yeah. you know, for me. And uh, learning just different breathing techniques has been helping me just kind of like breathe through shit. Yeah. You know? You know. Well, music. Well, it's it's I, I I love hearing that because I mean it's it's so obvious, right? Everyone's at home, everyone's stuck. We're all listening to the music, and like as obvious as that is, it's still just so profound, right? We've never appreciated it more. We've never related it to more. We've never connected with it more. And I think what it's going to cause is when you know now that things are opening back up little by little with a new perspective. I think art is going to become so much more important because we've learned yeah. that wow, music means this much. So when we go out and start seeing what we've been deprived of, like when we go get our next tattoo, yeah, when we yeah. see that new piece that's been put out, when we read the next book or whatever it is, these things are going to start to have a little more weight to them. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I'm, I'm really, I just, I'm really, really fascinated with uh, just people's reactions to art right now. Totally. Well, and you know, and art, and you have literally so much uh, 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 creative reference right now. Yeah. Both negative and positive, and you know, yeah. Even even creating my art, it's been a lot darker. You know, mm. a lot more gruesome, a lot more growth, and and you know, going back to like the balance thing, like it's subconscious, but it's all you know, coming back to how do I find balance in my art, in yeah. my life, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to see all the stuff that you uh, that you put out at the end of this. Yeah, Mark. you know, <laughs> uh, it's incriminating, but dude, uh, I have so many rad tattoos that I've been doing <laughs> <laughs> this fucking whole time, and I, you know, and it goes back to the validation thing of of you know, 
I want to post them right away to feel like, oh yeah, look what I'm doing. But at the same time, it's not necessary. You yeah. know, like oh, you're, you're actually tattooing. Is that what it is? Oh yeah. But you can't because then it would be like, oh, you're not on lockdown. Oh, you're not this. You're not right, that. Right. Like so, I feel like tattoo. Have our tattoo shops like health uh, code heart like as intense as hospitals? Pathogens. We're all certified in bloodborne pathogens. Like, yeah. Every client that comes through the shop gets tattooed is the first person to touch that station and the last person to touch that station. Yeah. And on goes the next, you know, it's just, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm glad that you're I'm glad that you're still doing it, man. I looking back, like when we had canceled the tattoo, it was like, cause I was getting a tattoo the day after I performed, I had yeah, a show. Yeah, yeah. So I had a show on Saturday and then I was going to come in on Sunday and get tattooed or Sunday or Monday. And, uh, my show was like good to go. And, and like it was March 20th or 21st, something like that. And like we went into lockdown March eighteenth, like mandatory. Yeah. And, and I was closed like, our shop Fuck! On the, they closed our shop on the sixteenth. Really? Yeah. Okay. Damn. So, but all I've been doing right now, dude, is just I, I've really been just trying to get back to the focus of the passion behind it. Because mm-hmm. once you lose the passion behind it, when it becomes the job, then you know uh, it, it's it's then it's over. Yeah. And so through all this stuff, I've learned to. I've been putting bigger gaps in my schedule. That way I can like focus on my shit and not have to be like uh, uh, so overwhelmed with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, it's a, that's so easily said, you know, what, 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 like what Dude. you talked about, like, you know, I'm trying to focus on the passion. I, you know, a lot of artists will say that, yeah. but to actually know what that means. Like, for example, me, like with, with recording, I struggle the most with my vocals. I'm not a great singer, but I pull it off as well as I can, whatever. But it's not even just about singing on key. Like when I sing in the microphone, like that take has to have passion. It has to have intimacy. It has to have- When you hear it and you see it. It has to have the emotion, right? Yeah. So, but it's not just about delivering, it's about giving yourself the time and space, those gaps to rejuvenate, to say, I'm gonna get, you know, get behind that, you know, pencil, get behind that mic, and I'm gonna deliver that passionate experience, yeah. right? So, cause like, I, I could be singing right on key all day, but if I'm not like fucking in that moment, it's not gonna come through. Yeah. You know, I, I sometimes uh, will do like an exercise where I close my eyes, I'll go in the back room, I'll close my eyes, and I'll imagine myself on a massive stage <laughs> with like millions, like thousands of people, right? just watching me and basically saying, I'm performing this live in front of this many people and like to get my like emotions up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, to give that to it. Yeah, Yeah, all that stuff. Focus, yeah. But uh, it's it's so crucial, especially in a time where like, oh man, I'm not feeling, I'm just gonna go run and grab a coffee. I'm gonna go for a drive. I'm gonna go to the mall and walk around. Like you don't get that. Yeah. You don't get to solve those problems the old way. It makes you grateful though. Yeah. You know, like after just like, not even being like to being able to go down, sit down, and eat. Yeah, you know. And then we did that the other day. We're like, oh, yeah, this is what it's like. Yeah, I, I got yeah. a burrito the other day, and I sat down outside, and I was like, shit, yeah. <laughs> this is real nice. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, so something that's been as a consistent topic in, you know, keeping the creative flow or staying passionate, like just staying healthy as a creative person, is the idea of community, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. surround yourself with the right people. Um, be around other artists, be around other musicians. Now, whether you were or weren't before the the lockdown, I mean, I know I didn't have enough people in my life uh, with that. I have the podcast. That's the extent of like yeah. the, the people I get to hang out with. Yeah. But um, still, though, there's always an opportunity for that. So the idea of community having such a strong effect, how did you balance not having that community you know, that concept, like, you know, the idea of like, oh, you're surrounded by tattoo artists in your shop. You got people coming in that love tattoos. You know, you got your buddies wanting to hang out outside of that. You don't yeah. get all that. All of a sudden that community factor is taken from you. How did you yeah. keep that up? I'm, I'm really good about reaching out to my friends. Like if I'm feeling a certain way, I'll, I'll call them. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, hey, we haven't talked in a while, whatever. But like when it came down to like the my like tattoo community, I was talking to all sorts of people from all over the u.s homies that tattoo and literally just asking them what they're doing you know and seeing what they're what they got going on and uh yeah like um there's different forums i've been watching and just watching new like um uh how-to videos you know 
and, and, and getting back to the roots of that stuff. Oh. So, <laughs> what? I feel brain dead right now. I'm not going to lie, dude. I'm like trying to do I'm, I'm feel very brain dead. Sorry, <laughs> listeners good. at home. I'm like, oh. <laughs> did you have a good day artistically, though? I did. Yeah, I think good. that's why I'm. Just, I feel like I, I think I'm like drained mentally. That's fine. Yeah. Did you get it so far? You're doing really well. Okay. You know, a few brain farts thank here you, and there, but thank nothing. you for the positive reinforcement. Yeah. <laughs> nothing bad I'm at like all. Talking like, yeah, I feel like a dummy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely yeah, not. I know. I know. Um, I've had some dummies on the show. You are far <laughs> from it. <laughs> oh. Um. So. Speaking of positive reinforcement, um, I I know anxiety is kind of a fad topic, mm. um, not to take away from the fact that it exists. Uh, I know mental health is a topic that is just always talked about. Yeah. Um, of course, everyone seems to tell each other how they're supposed to be feeling, so I guess everyone's just healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, with this whole lockdown, I know mental health has become much more of a issue, but I want to I want to keep it in the creative platform for the sake of not going on to topics we don't need to be talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, anxiety for me, um, creatively, I do ha- I haven't felt more anxiety. I've actually felt less anxiety creatively uh, because the world isn't going <laughs> on. That means I have and what for me. It's like I have time and space to okay. be creative comfortably. Yeah. Now outside of like, you know, writing and creating like anxiety can shoot to the fucking roof 800 yeah. more times. Right. Yeah. Um, but purely creatively through creativity, I've definitely felt a sense of comfort because there's not a lot going on. Yeah. Like I'm not missing out on anything. I can take my time and do things. I can prep things. There's, there's a sense of freedom in it. Yeah. Um, for you, how has the anxiety changed? Dude, you know what? I'm never an anxious person. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say never. I, I, I've never been, like, you know, anxious <laughs> in history. But as of late, I feel like my cup's so full with shit that my anxiety level is, is getting in the way of, you know, my creativity. And I mean, I find myself like indulging more, like smoking more weed or, you mm-hmm. know, fucking having an extra beer. And I'm like, you know, almost trying to like find tools to get rid of it, the anxiety. But do um, you think that uh, social media and the kind of encouragement to chill out and like, oh, it's fine to relax during quarantine has kind of made you feel like it's OK to have more weed or more beer or more this? Oh, dude, yeah. Just media in general. Because that's what got me. <laughs> big time. You know, it's okay. Just order in, you know, or it's okay. Just, you know, don't worry about the gym and don't worry about this or that. And I'm very, uh, uh, uh routine, yeah, uh, oriented. And so, like, during all this, my kids have been out of school and I've been, like, keeping routine up at 7 30, doing a thing. I've been trying to maintain the most, you know, uh, even keel routine to, combat that Mm -hmm. because right when my you know regular routine gets thrown out of whack then i'm like i feel like i miss things and and so i think what's been helping me with the anxiety is just keeping my routine i've been getting to the shop like sometimes two hours before my clients just so i can like stop focus come to reality like this is what i'm doing right now and let's go to it and normally it usually takes me about a half hour i usually get about a half hour before my clients but as of late, you know, I just, I need that solidarity in the morning to, you know. So where do you, how do you keep your confidence in your routine, right? So like routine is great and it's definitely a good, you know, way to combat anxiety. But at the same time, like there's that self doubt that we all have that says, who am I to say this routine is worthy? Who am I, who am I to say that this routine is the right thing to do? Like, should I be focusing on something else? Should I be paying attention to what's going on? For this blah 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 back and forth how do you stay confident in your routine because it works for me <clears throat> sorry because <clears throat> it works for me the routine i have i need to have an objective pretty much at all times mm-hmm. you know and sometimes it'll be far-fetched and i know when to cut that off yeah but uh yeah my routine works so that's what you know uh <laughs> pushes me through it i have changes you know of course uh, uh per any time but yeah yeah, that's it. I, I like that. I I think uh, once again, easier said than done. You know, except that <laughs> and, and that's it totally works it, for me, you right? Know, yeah. 
Like that, for, the one I have particularly <clears throat> right now works well, yeah. you know, in my, you know, day to day. Well, it's so important to say like, hey, this works for me. So that means it's right for me. Like I don't need anybody else to validate my Dude. routine. Yeah. Like, so like, for example, with me, I had such a hard time because like I need to be, I need to get up at five. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to stick to this. Dude, I can barely get up before eight now. I was getting up before <laughs> five. You know, hey. like I I miss the gym. Like I'm, you know, struggling in a lot of ways, you know, this and that. And I finally came to the realization actually in this last week that is like I've fallen off track not because uh, I'm not able to stick to my routine but because I haven't given it worth, right? Yeah. So like okay. if I wake up and I say like today I'm going to – today I'm going to record one guitar track. Or today I'm gonna cook my meals. Or today, yeah. whatever it is, it could be one thing. Today I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I'm gonna wipe my own. Ass. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. Like whatever it, I decide today is about. Like I need to say that if it takes one second or ten hours, it has the same worth. Totally. The day is worthy of that time. I think worth is such a like powerful word. Yes. Because it means so much. You know, like I. <laughs> I do that all the time. Like, you know, when I when I tell people the price for my tattoos, like, I sometimes be like, am I worthy enough yeah. to say that? But then they're like, yeah, here, boom. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Their response makes me realize that it is worthy, you know? Yeah. And, but yeah, that's uh, uh, worthy's <laughs> definitely the right word, man. Well, like, like today, for example, right? Like, I, I, I slept in a little bit. I woke up around like 8 30. You know, I had my coffee. I read my books. I came in here. I was like, all right, today. I'm going to record the verses of this song. Took like fucking 20 minutes. Yeah. But I've been having a really hard time with this song. My voice has been having a really hard time lately. Like, you know, just all this stuff. And I told myself, like, that is worthy of my entire day. That success, that doing, getting that done was worthy of my day. Totally. Which in turn opened my, you know, spirit up, opened my soul up, opened my creativity up to play more guitar, to practice, to this, to do all, you know, do all this stuff. So it's like, it's so important to say, even if your task take 10 seconds, that 10 seconds has to be worthy of your entire day. 100%. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. And it snowballs. Cause right when you start feeling like, you're like, okay, cool. And then you, you know, keep developing on that. Well, it gets your spirits up, right? Yeah, so totally. like, um, have you ever read the, the war of art? No. It's a really great book uh, by Stephen Pressfield. I think it should be mandatory for all creative people. <laughs> Honestly, it's the most. It's so fucking good. Yeah. But it, it's it's split up into three sections, and the third one is uh is about the muse. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and yeah. my favorite, I, what I took away from it, and that's my favorite part of this whole book, is the idea of the muse existing, and like everything we do is the seduction of the muse. Our creative flow isn't just if we're in a good mood or bad mood. It's if the muse is allowing us to see it. Yeah. It's something that is already out there that is being, so we have to seduce it. So we, you know, how do we seduce huh. it? Do we smoke weed? Do we get drunk? Do we, right. you know, go out and have a ton of sex? You know, what do we do? You know, those are the three examples I jumped yeah. through. But yeah. you know, whatever you do, like, are you seducing it? But the, at the end of the day, what he gets at is the true seduction of the muse to open up the creative flow to never have a block or a bump is discipline. Yeah. So for me, what that means is when I when I get up and I'm not feeling it. I will sit down at that table, I'll put the fucking metronome on, and I will run scales for five minutes yeah. or for five hours yeah. until something comes. Because I promise, every single time I run scales about 10 minutes in, next thing you know, I'm writing something new. I'm yeah. vibing with it. I'm into it. So with uh, with that rose, right? Yeah. I remember specifically, it was day two of just bullshit. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. Until finally, I just literally surrendered. And I was just like, you know, three, yeah. four, and drew that in, you know, an hour. Well, see, that's what that's what it's getting at. It's like whether you're running scales or you're you're dragging your ass through the mud of like, you know, just two days struggling with it. You have the discipline. It'll, that's and, the seduction. Yeah. Like the shit we don't want to do, that discipline of like putting ourselves in there. Eventually, that is what the muse of creativity is seduced by. Yeah. And once we get past like that, that, it just flows through us. Yeah. No blocks, no the bumps, muse. no matter what. Hey, because that's how it happens too. Yeah. Like you'll have a really heavy block and then it just flows. You know. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it's just boom. I'm curious to know, like, you know, what what if that applies for like you know a lot of different careers? Like, even if you're like fucking data entry, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's some times where you just like 
can't compute. And then there's some times where it's just fluid. For me, like, I mean, you could, t- I think, I think you could take moves. that idea and just kind of break it down into any form of like the human mind, right? Yeah. With enough discipline, the mind, you know, takes on a routine of its na- of the natural ability, right? Muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. It kind of has happened. So once the muscle memory takes over, once you've done it enough that the muscle memory is there, the brain feels comfortable, you know, our spirit gets to be free. Yeah. Nurtured. Yeah. So that's my take on <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm over here like, oh, the muse. That's what I was tripping on. The muse, the muse. Yeah, yeah. I go, I used, you know, I go, I go in these like weird head spaces when I, you know, when I just can't create, man. I'm like, what is it? Is there, you know, is, what is the moon in Leo? You know, is it? Uh, did I not drink enough water? Yeah, and, and I, it's not like some like you know image of like the muse is like this Greek goddess or something like you know it's it's, it's not that, that orb that fucking it's an existence because then the next day or whatever something just clicks and it's just on a crack and it's just fluid and you're like okay it's like you said the muse allows it yeah I mean I've I'm gonna my, say that in my head when I start creating out like a muse allow me <laughs> well it's the thing is like you you have to seduce it like I mean the best songs I've I mean in my opinion the best songs I've written or the best guitar playing I've done has come immediately while after or while running my scales yeah with that click track yeah you know it's something just like it's almost like there's like ice you're frozen your muscles are frozen it starts to break off and then all of a sudden this freedom happens and you're unstoppable yeah that's yeah and and it's so liberating too because then you you know right when that happens you're like oh shit you know whatever. you feel it yeah you do you definitely feel it that's the best part I'm a too. huge advocate of, uh, of energy man and my 100%. wife she's great because she'll you know center me because she knows when I'm like agitated and I need to make art you know for the next day or whatever and being able to just center yourself and, and allow it and, and use the muse yeah to create yeah can't forget the muse yeah. anytime there's a bump or a block I mean I I, I used to have a friend uh, he's a really great writer um, he actually makes a lot of role playing games too. Um, the, well, the Hills of Dunshire. <laughs> Parks and Rec, right? Yeah. <laughs> the Cones of Dunshire. The Cones, the of, cones Dunshire. of Dunshire. <laughs> Best show ever. Yeah. Um, but he used, to, he used to get so frustrated when people talked about writer's block. He's like, that's the biggest load of bullshit I've yeah. ever fucking heard. He's like, all you do is you sit down and you just fucking write. He's like, even if you're writing the word shit over yeah. and over again, if you write it a hundred times, I guarantee something will happen. Yeah. And I'm like, it's it's the exact same concept. So it's like the it's like the true uh, ability to never be blocked or never be to experience road bumps. Not that they don't exist, but to you know look at it and say, no matter what's going on, if I'm in lockdown or if I'm not in lockdown, yeah, or if like I, you can identify it. Like, you okay, can identify it. Yeah. You know, and this happens to be a road bump, or if you could just like place the placebo of this is just a road bump. Yeah, and you push past it, and rely on the on the discipline of it. Rely like find something that you can rely on. Like yeah. for me, I rely on running my scales. For you know, for other people, they could rely on writing the word shit a thousand times in yeah. a row. I mean, that's my you know. I, I just start using draw circles, circles, you know, and yeah, and then once you can relax that, you can move past it. And I think during yeah. all this is that yeah. Luckily, I have Procreate like my my iPad because yeah. I would have gone through an entire sketchbook already just you know just warm up exercises just yeah. to, you know see where it's going yeah I think a lot of uh, artists musicians creative people any, writers anything um, I think not even creative just in general a lot of people forget that the remedy of a creative block is purely like you said a warm up find, yeah. find, find that I one task what, yeah. find that one task that you can do not necessarily mindlessly but you can do to remind your body of how to do something i want to see what other people do i want to like figure out like get remedies from other people and then make my own brew of remedy well you heard it here if you guys have uh hit me up let me know how you break (laughs) the cycle yeah i'm I'm very (laughs) curious like what do they what do you do to like keep the creative flow going like what do you do to get over a block or you know because i guarantee you know i've Tony uh, Tony Clark is a very good friend of mine. He's a magician. He's been on the show twice. Uh, one of my favorite things ever said on the show was by him. He told me, he said, passion is physical yeah. because anything you're passionate about has a physicality to it. Hey, and anybody that's a professional magician is a fucking G. Yeah. That's a hustler. He's he's a beast. You'd be amazed <laughs> at what that guy's done. If you make a living at being a magician, 
Good for you, man. He's a beast. He's he a beast. It. But yeah, I love that passion is physical because it's yeah. true. Like everything we're passionate about in this life is a physical act. Yeah. So in order to get there, don't you think we should do something physically that helps us get there? Yeah. I usually just coax it with a shitload of five hour energy. <laughs> just force the process. <laughs> yeah. That's my only vice I have. Is my five hour energies. I've never had one. You're missing out, buddy. Am I? It's a trick. It's a secret. Does Try it actually work? For me, it does. Do you have energy for five hours? Sustainable energy for five hours with no crash. No, really? Five hour energy. <laughs> Sponsor <laughs> us. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I, I, I love it because it gets me there without getting me all cracked do out. Do you drink coffee? In the morning, yeah. And when do you drink your five hour? Usually like 12. I'll have like a half at a time. Damn. Yeah. That's like my, it's it's almost like my Adderall for the day. It's got to be will. so bad for you though, right? I mean, there's I no, don't know. Ingredient. yeah, no it's just idea. a shitload of vitamin B12. So I'm probably all jacked on B- B12. Yeah. Vitamins. That's probably why I always have like a semi <laughs> 75% of the day. It's like a Flintstones vitamin yeah. for adults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk about lessons learned. Um, um and you don't have to have any answers to this. This is huh. kind of just like a bonus question. Um, have you had any valuable lessons from overcoming the blocks and de- being defeated by them? 100%. When you know you've overcome it, use it, right? Sometimes I'll even move tattoo appointments if I'm painting or if I have something that I'm like, you know, if it's there, and you're organic and it's flowing use it right i love stay that. till 12 if you need to you know because when it's not there you're gonna wish you did and i think that's been my biggest thing is when i know i don't have it just put it away right and then when i do have it it's you know fuck yeah i love it. that yeah absolutely love that totally make it the priority make it the priority yeah because you know what i get my best results that way yeah because when i'm like you know I could go home and just sit there or whatever, but I'm like, no, it's here, you know. Sometimes I'll get out my paints at like, you know, six o'clock at night and, you know, you start dedicating hours at that point, you yeah. know. But, uh, yeah. I love <laughs> That's that. That's my lesson learned. That you got it, fucking use it. Well, it's so true, you know. it's. I think uh, <clears throat> use it because you ever like started a new project not necessarily tattooing but just you had an idea for something and you're like the first week you're like all about it and then all of a sudden you lose this steam because like now it's just work yeah totally it's it's very much like that in a very finite form like when it happens like ride that shit out don't put it away don't expect it to be there when you wake up in the morning hey because you know we're constantly evolving and sometimes it's you evolve overnight and you look at it you're like oh you know it's like that that thing we were talking or I sent you the other day about how like, you know, as an artist, as a musician, you're looking at your work, you're hearing your work, and you're never satisfied with it. But you're looking on these other people who you aspire to be like and, and you realize that your taste for better things evolves way faster than your skill does. Yeah. So if you're like constantly trying to chase that, you know, uh, uh, that skill level. It was called The Gap, right? The Gap. Yeah. Yeah. I sent that video to everyone, by the way. Totally. So cool. Because you're like, oh, shit, that's what it is. Because, you know, sometimes I'll look at even like artwork. I'll put it all the way onto, you know, to paper from just a sketchbook. Once you put it on like, you know, the arches paper, yeah. it's go time. I walked away from it, right? Came back to it and I just, I did not like it at all. Yeah. I just scrap it, you know, because it goes back to like, you know, if you're there, fucking do it because you'll probably have a good result. Yeah, you know. Well, it's, well, also when you come back, it's like you can't just you can't just throw it away. Like, cause just because your taste has grown in the last twenty yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes doesn't mean that you were I'll, wrong to do that. Hey, and I'll pick apart the like the piece that I'm. Oh, well, can yeah. I save this one little part and then yeah. build? You know, and then you're just like, dude, no, because you're looking at all this shit. And you start building on crap, and I'm, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I struggle with that. You know, what I'm doing is I very wrong, do, dude. I, I I'm doing. Uh, one guitar part one vocal no harmonies no anything like yeah, that yeah. just some doubled guitars but like and, and my takes are one take like go. my guitars are from start to finish even in the double it's all one take yeah it's authentic it's real and that's what i'm that's what i want this raw stuff but it you know it's very much an experience 
and yeah, that's yeah. what I'm going for. It's humbling. But it's but it's not as easy to listen to as like a fully produced electronic record. Okay, yeah. It's not. Yeah. I know that. I know that you're not going to drive down, chill, and put... You're not going to put on my music over, like, the fucking Glass Animals. Yeah. <laughs> it's but funny. I, I was just referred to that band recently. Dude, Glass Animals is life. It, it it's was freaking it's super life. super unique. I think as of late, I've been really uh, uh, attaching myself to artists and musicians that don't really have a genre. Yeah. You can't pin anything on that. Glass Animals are as important as Led Zeppelin to me. Oh. Yep. Heavy duty. Yep. I yeah. stand by that statement till the day I die. I was listening to Jan. I, I I'll give them that. Like they're you know very unique, and, and and I like hearing shit that you've literally never heard before, or a mix of everything at once that works. In the mind. album "How to Be a Human Being." I'm sure you've heard it if someone referenced you. Oh, I oh. think they. I I've listened to like a handful of their songs. I'm that, gonna send you this album. Okay, if I don't like it, you're fucking fired. Dude. Listen to the whole fucking <laughs> album. It will change your life. All right. It changed everything for me. Everything for me. I'm excited now, yeah. It was like the first time I heard Zeppelin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is just... Don't get me started on the glass. Uh, <laughs> Die hard yeah. over here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's why... So overcoming it. Yeah. You know, ride You know, ride with it. So what What about when you're defeated? When you just like... When you... On the days that... I guess I guess defeated is not the right word. Before you overcome it. On defeated the days that... Defeated is the right like, word. <laughs> yeah, because you're you're only defeated until you overcome it, right? Right. Yeah, so yeah. in the before overcoming it, you're defeated. How do you? What have you learned any valuable lessons in the defeat of it? Uh, you don't have to have an answer. No, no. It's just, <laughs> hey, uh, it's, just it's just how to suck it up. Because all of us deal with defeat or deal with you know the uh, yeah the the rejection of it differently. Yeah. And as I know, most artists are you know very sensitive. Yeah, you know, and so yeah, when you feel like you've been defeated, I, I, yeah, I get in a real shitty funk, <laughs> you know. Like, there's no eloquent way to like, oh yeah, yeah I do this. It's just I'm a piece of shit for like three. I days. hate myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't talk to me. And anybody <laughs> listening that's not experienced this, I need you to hear this. <laughs> we're not bad people. We just need you to understand that we're gonna be shitty for three days. <laughs> Because yeah. there's nothing worse as a creative person or as an artist or anything to get into that state of mind, not be able to talk about it or share it because we don't know how, and then feel bad about it because someone doesn't like the way we're acting. Oh, yeah. Was that an apology to your girlfriend? Is she pissed you right now or no? No, okay. no. That was, that's <laughs> just in general. I mean like no, living I with know. other people or like you know, and, and recognize when you're in that and like look, if you're not willing to share it, that's fine because like obviously not everyone's gonna understand it no one understands me oh my god yeah um, <laughs> that's what i feel like sometimes but like <clears throat> then you know find a safe space for you to go through it yeah and the people that you know are dealing with people going through that try to understand yeah don't don't take it personally i think that's the difficulty i think uh the people closest to us take it personally when we're struggling in that oh, yeah, because yeah. we're total shitheads. We're, we it's, are like, yeah, it's like the 360 un, degree unreasonable, just mean psychos. And how could you not take it personally? So well, like, it just shows you your, your passion about something like, yeah, you're just like, Oh, whatever. Then, you know, cause there yeah. are some people that are like, oh, whatever, you know, but yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely take it easy on each other. Cause it's none of it is personal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yeah, man. All right, before we go, yeah. do you have any advice through your quarantine experience as a creative person, as a tattoo artist, as a whatever, um, to those discovering these new challenges? Advice. Yeah, uh, you know, I just... Nothing that's going to be worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just one of those things where, like, you know... Uh, uh, once you can uh, uh, learn to identify what, I guess we'll call it, like, stage you're in, and you can learn to, like, step back and just, like, know that that's coming before you get into too deep of a hole and perhaps <laughs> give something up completely. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah, just, like, identify that, you know, this is probably just a hiccup because of whatever else I'm thinking about. Or maybe just some people are just suck at art. Yeah. Or suck at music. Some people you should just put it down. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. I like that piece of advice. Be able to identify and recognize what things are for what they are. That's been my biggest tool lately is being like, okay, you know, like just being in tune with your body, man. And being like, hey, I can tell nothing's going to happen right now. Yeah. 
you know. But there's that, you know, there's that little fire sometimes, and you're like, wait, I think think something's coming on. Just push through it, you know. Rock and roll. But yeah, once you get do the thing. Yeah. Well, shit, that was great, man. Hey, I, I appreciate, appreciate you talking about this with me. Yeah, it's. I had a couple brain parts today, but you know, whatever. You were but. spectacular. I think you, I think you shared some incredibly crucial <laughs> things. Um, I think somebody. I hope somebody takes something from it because you know what? Like I, 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 my heart goes out to the artist homies and the musicians and anybody that yeah. has to work creatively. You know, because we all go through the rut. Like my heart goes out to anybody that has to deal with that because sometimes it's really shitty. And then, but the <laughs> golden end of that is like when you produce what you were striving to do and it looks rad then you know that's the the payment yeah yeah recognize that yeah recognize gavin hayes ladies and gentlemen cheers cheers <laughs> empty glasses <Yeah>. those big <laughs> ice cubes <laughs> all right man peace cool.